Let's talk about NetLogo patches. And to do that, we are going to implement uh, Conway's Game of Life, which looks like that. Hopefully you're familiar with it, right? It's a set of automata where, you know, all the states have either alive or dead, and uh, they follow these simple rules. Uh, so if uh, a cell is live, then it will either die or uh, come stay alive depending on how many of its neighbors are alive and if it's dead it will come alive if exactly three neighbors are alive. Okay, so NetLogo has these patches uh, that are perfect for that. So the patches form a two-dimensional grid as you saw right here, right? It's 16 by 16 um, or minus 16 minus 2 plus 16. So we have some code here that doesn't do anything. Uh, our setup function, the first thing we want to do is uh, let's color all the patches. So I'm going to ask the patches uh, to set their patch color and the color of the patches is P color, not color. That's the color of a turtle. The reason is because the turtles uh, you know, can refer to the, the color of the patch that they're in using P color uh, instead of color. So um, Let's set the colors to one of, I'm just randomly between, let's say, white and red. So we'll say that white is dead and red is alive. There's a little comment there so I can remember that. Okay, so when I hit setup, boom. Every time I hit setup, we get a different one, right? Uh, randomly. So one of is going to pick randomly from a list. And a list and lists in that logo are uh, literally literal lists are defined using the brackets, square brackets. So okay, so now my Go is gonna implement the rules of the game right here. So every time I hit Go, I'm gonna ask the patches to do something, and basically we're gonna implement one step of this so any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies a live cell with two or three live neighbors a live any live cell with more than two more than three live neighbors dies basically any live cell with two or three live neighbors uh, lives on otherwise it dies so we're gonna need to do that uh, so we're gonna say if and then so I have to figure out how many of my neighbors are alive. So we go back to the NetLogo dictionary and uh, we see that there is a neighbors function. Uh, where are you? It's on the agent sets. Right? And neighbors. Right? Neighbors. Neighbors. Reports an agent set containing the eight surrounding patches uh, for this patch. So perfect. That's exactly what we need. If neighbors. Uh, so that's going to be my four neighbors. Remember, now I'm in here, so I am a patch. Um, I mean, my eight neighbors. And uh, but what I need to know is uh, how many of them are white, right? So there's also uh, this nice command in NetLogo called the width. So I could say neighbors with p color equals, and I want the live ones, which are red, right? So neighbors with p color red. So this this whole thing here is going to return to me the set of all my neighbors that have a patch color that are red uh, instead of just all of them, which is the neighbors. And uh, I need to count them. So actually, I just need to count them back. So that's that. And uh, I'm going to need this couple of times so I'm gonna set a local variable so let num live neighbors to be that right and uh, so if num live neighbors equals so back to the rules because I forget them if any live cell with two or three live neighbor lives on so less than two or more than three you die uh, so it's less than two or more than three if uh, they die. Um, 
So set P color to dead, which is white. Right. So uh, actually, I, first of all, I need to check if this cell is alive. So if my P color is alive, which means red, if my P color is red, if I am alive, then if let me comment that if I'm alive, then uh, I'm dead. If I have less than two or more than three neighbors, kill me. Okay. And uh, so otherwise I stay alive, right? According to the rules, otherwise if I have two or three, I stay alive so my color will, will stay uh, red. So that's if I'm alive, um, let's see this closes that. Otherwise, uh, else, and there is no else like that in NetLogo. And uh, you do it this way, so you see you have to specify at the top if else, and then you have this one bracket for the then part and another pair of brackets for the else part. So this is the else part, else I am dead, right? So if P color is red, I'm alive. Otherwise, we're gonna assume that you only have white or red, so otherwise I'm dead. If I am dead, what's the rule? If any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, okay. If number of live neighbors is exactly three then I'm gonna set my P color to alive which is red okay that's that and that closes that that closes that and I think we're done let's see if this works so we set it up we go and things are happening now we can hit the go, you know, the forever button, and you see it just keeps going. So that kind of seems to work, right? Well, if you're alive, uh, if you know the game of life, you can realize you know, that that doesn't look quite right. That's not really how it goes. And uh, so this is a subtle point uh, I want to make here. Uh, the reason this doesn't work is, you know, this ask patches, right? And the ask primitive in that logo actually what it does it it asks it runs this code for each patch in sequence right one then the other one then the other one I don't know and you I don't think you can predict what exact order happens but that's what happens so first let's say it goes this way first this patch runs the code then this patch runs the code maybe changes its color and this one then maybe he changes his color and so forth that's not the definition of the game of life, right? In the game of life, all the patches are supposed to look around and change the color at the same time. That is not what asks does, and that is also not what asks concurrent does either, right? So uh, you got to be careful, right? So it doesn't, there is actually, there is no way uh, built in to NetLogo to get you know the agents and the patches of the turtles to do some all of them something at the same time so it's always going to happen one after the other so how do we fix this well we're going to have to do it sort of by hand basically we're going to need to first go through ask all the patches to figure out what their new color is going to be without actually changing it and then we do a second round where everybody actually does go ahead and changes their color so for to do that uh, we're going to need to give the patches another, um, you know, property. Um, the way we do that is we say patches own uh, new color, right? So this is, you know, a member variable of the patches variable, a property of patches, whatever you want. But, you know, uh, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, you know those things. That's basically what it is. Um, so the new color is going to be what? Well, uh, we're going to set the new color to be the current color, uh, unless it changes. So in this case, we're going to set new color to be white, and we're going to set new color to be red. So we did that. We asked the patches to set their new color 
to the new color. Right now, if we run this, uh, nothing's going to happen because uh, we're not actually changing the color. So what we need to do is ask patches again and now uh, set p color to new color. Right, and then we go over here. We set it up. Go, and there we go. That looks a lot more like life. You got your little flippers and these guys and you know this guy and uh, the side thing you can go here and settings you see right now my world uh, it does not wrap but I could uh, set it up so that my world wraps and now I have life on a donut so this is life on a donut a uh, little more fun but it still as always ends up stabilizing and you know we can go back here and say uh, 16 by 16, you know, that, that's okay, but I want a bigger life. Let's, uh, let's go 30 by 30. And, uh, that's gonna be too many pixels to see. So I'm gonna make the patches smaller, just five pixels. Apply. You see my world changed. I'm oh, kind of small. Let's make it bigger. Six. Apply. Okay. Set up. And go. So you see now I just have five by five. Nice, sir. And uh, let's see, <laughs> let me make it just one by one, and let's see how big we can do this. 100 by 100, which is actually 200 by 200, apply. It's tiny, yeah? Uh, is that gonna work? Set up, well, it's a little bit slow. Go, well, I can move my speed to normal speed. And there, you see, it's going, it's going. You can see them moving. These are single pixels, so um, it's going pretty fast. You can see the ticks here moving along. And uh, when you change the speed, by the way, it doesn't actually make it go faster. Uh, you know, there's no magic there. It, it, all, all it does is it reduces the number of times you get display, the display updates, which, you know, most of the time that's like 99% of the CPU time is just displaying it. Uh, so by displaying it fewer times, it actually goes faster. Uh, so there you go. That's the game of life in just a few lines of code, net logo code.